So Shrey, do you think, uh, I mean, what's your view on the projected tax collections for the next year? Uh, given that already there were some rate cuts announced and now the new rate cuts for individuals. Uh, but still, uh, you know, Amit spoke about fiscal deficit, but the surprisingly, the fiscal deficit has only been predicted at 3.5% again. <laughs> I don't know how it is going to get achieved. So do you think the tax uh, collections projected uh, are achievable? Well, with the uh, new developments in the budget, uh, obviously uh, uh, there has been a tax on the e-commerce transactions and then there is again a TCS uh, on the LRS payment. So these are all steps which are taken by the government to probably enhance its revenue at an early <coughs> stage rather than, you know, uh, so that's more like timing. Timing. It's more like Correct. timing because I if also most of the time trying to defer some expenditure, you know, changing yeah. in accounting policies where yeah, you know food right. subsidy bill and all is getting transferred. Yeah. To the and there's a like pre payment of revenue. Collections. So yeah. Pre yeah. of yeah. revenue and post of yeah. expenditure. And also these are the areas. Which so your first three quarters will go very nice. <laughs> Suddenly in the yeah. fourth <laughs> quarter you will get the deficit. And you know these are the areas they have targeted. You know these are some of the very very green areas. You know e-commerce transactions these days are are at an all time high. And then you know you have LRS. You know uh, you have uh, n number of HNIs doing LRS each year uh, to uh, two hundred and fifty thousand US. So yeah, but so uh, on on e-commerce, my take is uh, as you rightly said, it could be at best a timing issue because. Most of those vendors, I mean, assuming they're Indian vendors, they would be, I mean, I'm guessing they would be paying taxes right. on their income any which way. So it's clearly a cash flow issue. Uh, so I don't see tax collections going up significantly because of that. Maybe because of LRS, yes, because, you know, again, I I, I think if I've read it right, uh, the TCS will be only of, on expense, not on every transfer of money. So if you're investing, I'm guessing there is no TDA, yeah, TCS. Right, right. So again, I mean, yeah, I, I take a point, there will be some incre incremental tax collection. Right. Uh, but on the larger picture, do you still feel uh, the collections estimate will be met? Um, the uh, the finance minister pointed out in her speech that uh, the, the collections, uh, the uh, target was 20, uh, some 22, uh, Last crore, uh, and out, out of that, 19 or maybe 19 and a half lakh crore was already made. So maybe you know, with these numbers and with all these steps, uh, it's it's quite possible. The, uh, the so you think it can? Well, I strongly have my doubts <laughs> because uh, I think somewhere we also need to figure uh, factor in the fact that the economy is not doing very well. So the income tax, uh, you know, FSE net of refunds. Uh, should eventually face that challenge because income tax is ultimately a tax on income. So unless the people make that kind of income and the corporates show better results. So I, I can't imagine how this ties in with lower consumption, lower corporate growth, how do you tie in and lower corporate tax rate also. I mean, how do you tie in a higher tax collection, especially on the uh, direct tax side? But, but yeah, I mean, uh, maybe, maybe uh, we all hope that it gets collected. But uh, from a tax point of view, did it meet your expectation? Uh, not quite. Um, although, you know, with uh, with probably the rollback of DDT, we expected something uh, positive. But, you know, uh, after probably analyzing the same. So now, you know, uh, we feel that the corporates are in any case taxed at 25%, whereas DDT was earlier 20%. So there is in any case an increase of 5%. Uh, with with the rollback <laughs> of DAD. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly, you know uh, the 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 tax rate that was reduced for corporates twenty two percent. Now that has to be again increased by a surcharge of ten percent in a, in case of any company. Whereas earlier it was only where the income was. Well, more is that than, a new surcharge? Yeah. So ten percent additional surcharge. So the effective rate goes to twenty four point two percent compared to twenty five percent for a company earning less than one crore. So there's only a difference of point eight percent. Effectively, okay. no, but twenty five also had a surcharge, no? Earlier. But that oh, was yeah. only for incomes in above. Also, oh, 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 now it's a flat surcharge of ten percent. So effectively, <laughs> okay. there's only a only a decrease of point eight percent. 
Okay. Uh, very very minor decrease. Again, you know that that would be probably compensated off. I'm sure there will be new surcharge coming. Says <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure they will not let it go. And probably in uh, Q3 of 2020, we will see a new surcharge. And again, there has been a change to it that again no deductions under under Chapter 6 a would be given to those companies right. who are waiting 22 percent. Hmm. So uh, probably you know. So effectively, you know, you don't get any sort of tax benefit really. Uh, so, so it's like giving money in one pocket and take, taking out the money from the other pocket. So. Right. right. So, and you know, just talk us through the key changes in I think uh, the bank. I mean, the NBFC sector or whatever sectors you were covering. Uh, so, uh, one of the uh, one of the bigger changes uh, that has been brought about is again. Uh, you know, uh, sovereign wealth funds, they have been allowed to invest in the infrastructure facilities, in the companies who right. are uh, developing, operating and maintaining infrastructure facilities. So the incomes to uh, to those sovereign wealth funds or uh, to the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority, so that's yeah. the uh, specific uh, that has been given. So uh, any subsidiary of the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority or the sovereign wealth funds incomes to them shall be exempted. Uh, this uh, this is one of the change then you know uh, the other thing uh, the other bigger change that has been done is with regard to the uh, residential status for individuals so now uh, any person uh, who leaves india for employment uh, so the number of days for which he needs to stay in india for meeting that residential threshold has not reduced from 182 days 120, to 120 days. 120 days so this is uh, you know one of the one of the very significant uh, amendments that has been done and this would impact a lot of um, ocis or, or the clarification has come that the tax would be only on the income generated in india so that was, but that's that only for stateless, for, uh, stateless, for stateless, for stateless person, person not for these people so now these persons, you know, it, it would have a very significant impact. But I guess uh, treaties should protect somewhere, right? Yeah, treaty should protect, but uh, still... Because I'm guessing uh, if most of these people go out of India after 120 days and, you know, they end up being a resident of some other state because they will end up spending more than 180 days. So you will get into a tiebreaker rule uh, to some right. extent mm -hmm. and then you should get some safeguard some safe. uh, right. from, from this problem. Right. Then there has been a positive, uh, or rather not a positive, but a, a minor uh, change to the to the rule on significant economic presence. So that has now been deferred to AY22. But that's not. I see again that's not being a change. That's like a mandatory thing. They could have done anything on that. Right. I mean, there is no rule. There is nothing. So how do you implement that also? So, but. I had one question here. I mean, they postpone this thing, but they introduce another uh, concept of uh, advertisements. Uh, was it advertisement or something else? So there's income from advertisement. So advertisement which are targeted for the oh yeah yeah. So the Indian data advertise. where you use it. Right. But is that going to get implemented right now? Uh, again, AY twenty two twenty three. So that's just again like a new rule added, but not right. implemented right, right. now. Okay. Right. Okay. But that's more in line with the the global. Uh, five to seven action plans. Action plans. Yeah. Yeah. So the expressions at international forum. Uh, another another significant development has been uh, now where you know the uh, taxpayers are filing appeals before ITAT. Mm -hmm. So now uh, in order to claim a stay of demand, they have to now mandatorily deposit a sum of twenty percent of their total tax demand with, uh, before. Uh, the ITT should grant them a stay. So now this has been mandated. Whereas, but do you think there is any reason to that? I mean, any any specific logic or uh, reason? Revenue enhancement. Uh, <laughs> cash 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 only foreseeable reason. Again, you know, and this is uh, regardless of the fact whether you know the assessees uh, or the taxpayers issues are covered by any of you know right, past yeah, precedents. Right. So that is something you know for which we. So basically, there is all the incentive to create artificial litigation, and then collect some correct. cash. Correct. Basically, correct. do a cash flow management rather than correct. income management. Correct. 